All right, fam. So, with this weather going on, there's not a whole lot to say about the garden. You know what I mean? Summertime has been rough. It's been one of the hottest years that I can remember for a substantial amount of time. The bugs have been crazy. We've been having some uh, serious uh, wind and rainstorms during the night. Now, I'm not complaining about the rain because we could use it. Definitely 100 degree weather, rain is essential. You know, so there's a lot of water and I don't have to do, but at the same time, it's been rough. It's been rough on the garden and some of the things have been able to uh, make it through it, but some of it just been struggling. All right, so the only, one of the things that we got growing is our cow peas, and it seemed to be doing pretty well. So we're going to go ahead and harvest some of them today. Um, we do have a couple of dragon fruit that might need to go ahead and come off. But uh, other than that, you know, our tropicals are doing amazing. They loving this heat, and they loving the rain that they get. So I can't complain about that. So, you know, just a lot of the vegetables are not doing their best. I have my okra coming up and um, the bugs are having a field day with the leaves but I don't think that's going to stop them from growing. I'm just going to have to find some way to control the bugs as they grow. Um, other than that, you know, my, my wife uh, uh, blue butterfly, my, my wife blue butterfly pea, Whew. I ain't never realized that was rough to say. My wife blue butterfly pea it's looking really well my passion fruit vines are looking really good but i'm not getting a whole lot of fruit that is crazy because as big as they are as mature as they are i should have a ton of fruit on them but it is not doing this yet so we're gonna go ahead and put these beans and i'll show you a little bit of that stuff going on in the garden All right, fam. So we're gonna go ahead and um, harvest this dragon fruit um, because of the evening showers and the bugs. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it should not affect the taste too much. Now, too much water can actually dilute the sweetness of it. So if you look at this thing here, you can see a whole bunch of little light spots. You can see where the rain, too much rain has split the fruit. You know, um, I don't think it should hurt how good this fruit is, but we definitely gonna taste it because it's definitely right. So we're gonna go ahead and harvest another one real quick. 
All right, guys. So this fruit looks way better. I'm gonna go ahead and take it. So this is generally what they look like. All right, usually a pretty fruit. This one do have the little spots where the bugs try to bite through, but of course they they don't get through the skin of these too much. Um, it's a nice pretty color. I have seen a lot better looking. All right, fam. So we have our dragon fruit harvested. Uh, we have many more on the on the plants, uh, trying to get ripe. None of them look as good as they should. All right, so we had a rough winter and a lot of our plants got beat down pretty good but some of them made it through okay not none of them made it through perfect but they're still doing what they do but because of the evening showers and us not being able to get out here and pollinate them on the one day that they are open to be pollinated you know we're losing a lot of them also okay so uh this is our crop of cow peas all right we already harvest quite a few and if you look at a couple of videos back you saw when i direct sowed the cow peas into the ground and what you saw just a minute ago was the result of that they went crazy now if you live in a hot climate you live in the south or someplace where the temperatures can get pretty high cow pea is one of those crops that you can grow without an issue all right, so they are drought tolerant. That means if you can't water them or they go a little while without water, they will be fine. All right, so they uh, originated, you know, in Africa. And so they are perfect for hot temperatures where there may not be enough water. All right, so other than okra, cow pea is a really good one, all right. These, this is something that I have tried already. So those two crops, I could tell you for sure, triple digits, water, no water, will actually do what they need to do. All right, so it takes very little care and you can grow cow peas, you can grow okra. All right, so as y'all can see, I waited to the last part of the year to actually plant it. Well, the middle of the summer to plant my okra because I know why nothing else is doing anything okra is going to do their thing all right fam so i picked a lot of the blue butterfly pea from my head in the back look how beautiful these things are wow look at that color now honestly guys i was hoping that my bees would love these flowers i would love for them to go ahead and consume what they need out of there go in there and turn their nectar blue now i don't know if that's a thing but i figure if it turns everything else blue, why wouldn't it turn the honey blue also? So I was hoping that would happen, but I do not see my bees fooling around with them too much. You know, so maybe that's just this year, maybe next year they will. Mm. Blue butterfly pea. My wife loves these things. She drank this blue butterfly tea with her lemonade all the time so I'm hoping that my bees gravitate towards them at some point one of these years so I could display some blue honey so found this is a bowl full of cow peas all right this is about the third time we harvest that from that plant and um, it's still giving I mean it's healthy and it's still growing so I am convinced that we're gonna get plenty more peas off of there I mean these things are fresh now some of the pods had dried out which is not a problem they'd be dry black eyed peas but the fresh ones man talking about good I took it uh, fried up some of them or uh, stewed up some of them with some onions Whew. delicious all right guys so we're gonna go ahead and cut into this dragon fruit that's a little beat up <laughs> and see what it tastes like mm. 
smells delicious. <laughs> So if you've never had dragon fruit before, each fruit tastes just a little different. So we're gonna go ahead and um, dig in, taste, see what it tastes like. Taste the dragon. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Oh my goodness. That's real sweet. <laughs> oh wow. Oh my goodness. This need to be some ice cream. Mm -mm. You gonna freeze it? <laughs> it need to be cold. That is delicious. Like We need to check the bricks on this. Yeah, that's literally the best, sweetest one we have had. Even outside the yellow. Mm -hmm. That is crazy. Man. Maybe it, just leaving it on the on the plant a little longer. Tastes like some somebody put some sugar, sugar in there. It. Yeah, that job is super sweet. And we need to check the bricks on this. Put it in the refrigerator. All right, fam. So, <laughs> I watched a couple of movies and they shelled me some peas. Yes. So, guys, um, to y'all who know, it's a really satisfying thing to sit there and just shell peas. You know, I focused on the movie and just shelled peas, and before I knew it, I was done. I'm telling you guys, these things are delicious, fresh. You can eat them raw, and they taste like peanuts. But cooked, they taste amazing. You can actually leave them inside the shell and um, cook them when they're still real fresh, and they taste really, really good. All right, but one thing I did want to do, I want to get a bricks on these dragon fruit that we had earlier. They was amazing. So we're going to see how how it scores on the bricks test. Hey right, guys, so this is gonna be the tool that I'm gonna use to measure the sweetness of these dragon fruit. Now we had them in the refrigerator because while they taste amazing the way they were, they actually taste way better when they're cold. So I'm gonna go ahead and mash this up a little bit, get some of this juice. And we're gonna measure the sweetness of it. This up, put some of this on the glass. Let's see, let's see. Let's see. So it is 18. <laughs> that is extremely sweet. <laughs> All right, fam. So when you saw the dark line, that that is where the the bricks test is on that particular um, fruit. And 20 is generally the top. So anywhere from I want to say it was 14. Don't quote me on that. And up is is really good. And 18 is man is amazing for a dragon fruit. So I'm really excited. And man, I need some more of them in my life. And I don't know what we did different, but these things are on it. So me and my wife, we about to devour these things. I'm here for the dragon fruit. <laughs> <laughs> that one is mine. You sure? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. you took the bigger hole. Maybe not. Just the bigger hole. Oh. Mmm. Good love. You need to make some lemonade with this. It's like, I don't know, man, like sherbet or, I mean, I don't know. It's sweet. Crazy sweet. Mm hmm. I'm 
Open. Open. <laughs> So that's a whole nother variety there. Looks totally different. And this is not known for being a real sweet variety, but it is a good variety to pollinate other plants with. So mm. it is really good. It's not nearly as sweet as the other one, but it is really sweet. So fam, if you actually want to see what a dragon fruit really tastes like, you must grow your own. That's the only way you're going to do it unless you have a dragon fruit farm nearby. Because <laughs> you're never going to find them this good in a store. Never.